guys, what I thought we'd do is develop some more chords and really understand what's going on in the chord. And uh, this time I think we'll do it in the minor key. We'll just keep it quite simple. We'll work in A minor, okay? And then I'll talk quite a bit what I'm doing with, the, my, with my right hand. <laughs> Okay, so you're familiar with, we'll start up here just now, you're familiar with A minor of course, right? So let's just say we're in the key of A minor, right? And 1, 4, 5 in A minor is A minor of course. Keep it up here, D minor, E, or E7 and back to A minor. And again, as we've talked about umpteen times, uh, a chord is basically three notes, a triad. And the major key is the first, the third, the fifth, and the minor key is the first, the flat, and third, and the fifth. And we really just, everything else is built in those three notes. We develop the chords like it's a fully A minor. The sixth notes mainly because A, hey, we've got six strings. But a lot of the time, we basically just need those three notes. And a lot of the time, you'll see me playing finger style. All I'm using is the thumb for the bass and the three fingers for the treble. That's all I'm doing. And I'll use one of those fingers to try and emphasise the melody. But I want to give you one or two more chords. We may have done them before, but again, it's a good thing to go over them again and know exactly where you are with them. So, a lot of times if I'm playing a tune, unless the tune specifically asks for a full minor chord, at least A minor, I'll play the minor seventh. Uh, the reason for that being, uh, to me it gets a lot more cool feeling. But the other thing is it frees up my pinky to play all sorts of notes and not too much because sometimes you can overdo it. So A minor 7th, so how do I work out the 7th? It's simple. There's 8 notes in a scale and the 7th note in that scale, as you know a scale is, for example, a scale in A, it's from A to A. Uh, and A minor is a relative major, relative minor to key of C, so there's no sharps or flats, which means we don't have to do anything to the notes to alter them to make a western scale. So basically, as I said before, that's where the key signature comes from. Uh, very quickly, say we're in the key of G, right? So the scale in G is obviously G to G, G, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, okay? But to keep the intervals in the Western scale, we have to make the F and F sharp, just basically to keep the, interview, uh, the intervals, and so it sounds like a Western scale to our ears, like say G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G, if we just played an F natural, it wouldn't sound right. That's actually a mode, that's a mixolydian mode. That mixolydian mode in G is every note from G to G. But for the Western scale, to keep the intervals of the Western scale, uh, the F is to be an F sharp. So anything that's in the key of G is one sharp, F sharp, and it's relative minor, it's E minor, which is one sharp, again, F sharp. that tune. Anyway, so we'll come back to our A minor 7th. So the 7th note of the scale is a G. So if we're playing A minor up there, we can either hit G one or two ways. Either take our third finger off the A and play an open G there. Or we could play it with the, with the pinky here. So, so that's a minor 7th. But in this occasion I'm playing it down here. So there's the 7th note, there's the G there. There's a G there if I wanted it here. Anyhow, and as I say, the cool thing about playing, like, say, for example, an A minor there, I've got, oh, I've got my pinky to play about it. Another chord you'll hear me using a lot is the ninth. Now, when you're playing your fingers, it's really good. You can discriminate a lot between the notes, a lot easier than a plectrum player, although the good plectrum players can, of course, do it with sweet picking. But it's, for me, it's instinctively, it comes easy to me. So there's A minor. So what I'll do is I'll just play, instead of playing the full bar chord, I'll play open A and play the three trebles. So if I'm, only, if I'm playing part of a tune and I don't need the full chord, that's basically what I'll do all the time. Full A minor chord in third position. And there I've got the three notes of the triad. I've got the C, I've got the E, and I'm adding on an A as well. Now, the, not so much a device, but a thing I maybe use to colour the tune that I'm playing will be to play a ninth. So if in the key of A minor, the ninth is just for example, it's from A to A, it's an octave eight notes. 
So therefore the ninth note is B, so just add it on here. Which is a nice sound. Sometimes what I'll add on is a minor seventh as well. Remember that G we had here? I'll add that on along with the chord. So there you've got a nice alternative for playing. So there I just playing a straight A minor chord, A minor ninth with the seventh. And the other good thing as well, again we're in A minor, which of course means there's no chapter or flats. I can look at my guitar and know the notes I'm going to hit without hitting a clanker, right? So there's A, there's B, C, D, or even E, if you can reach it. So I can play all those notes. I like playing fourths, right? The interval of a fourth, uh, which is easy to remember. It's just the last two strings played in parallel. Now, it doesn't always work, right? And sometimes people don't like it, but sometimes, in fact, quite a lot, I'll use it. So instead of going, I'll go. And again, it's things you can use to colour in your chord, just by using, as I say, either the minor ninth, add the seventh, do the same thing in your fourth D minor chord. So, same thing, I've just moved up to 10th position, I'm getting a triad here, playing an open D. I can go up again. And then, for the fifth, now it's not always a dominant seventh, the fifth obviously would be E seventh. But I can think of quite a few tunes where the fifth note isn't a minor chord, it isn't a dominant seventh or a, a, a major chord, it's actually a minor chord, Black Magic Women's for one. So, but it's normally a straight chord, but you can also play the E here. So I'm going to, say for example, play an E seventh here, right? This E seventh chord, by the way, all I'm doing is barring the three trebles in seventh position, and then I'm adding, and this, the B string, I'm playing two frets higher. It's a common seventh shape to do, just using three notes, it's really handy when you're in a hurry. But what I'll do is, instead of playing the F sharp, I'll play an F natural, which is a flat ninth. And it gives it quite a nice feel. Right, so that was the ninth. Ninth with a minor seventh. D minor. And then the fifth. Same thing again. Take that down a tone. Same thing again, and we're now in the key of G minor. G minor, add no in the ninth, then. Uh, the thing we could do is maybe add on an eleventh. Let's go back to this A minor shape. And we'll add on a D. Now that's the eleventh, again you use the octave. Say, so when we actually come to the D, it's like 8 plus 3, so there's a the D there. So what we could do is extrapolate that big word. Say we're playing D minor 7th. Add the 11th note on here. An interesting sound. So again, we're now back to the A minor. A minor. D minor 7th. Add the 11th on. Oh, that didn't sound right, so we'll come down a, a semitone behind that. Sorry. Cool. Bring up here. It's the 9th plus the minor 7th. And again, the 7th here. Back to the A minor again. But play it here for me, change. So that's the basic things you can add to the chords. You can add a ninth, uh, you can add a, a, a minor seventh with the ninth, uh, and you can add an eleventh chord again. And these work through all the keys. So again, let's go to G minor, which as I say is a key that's used quite a lot. It's a G minor. So I'm playing a G minor seventh. Add a ninth. Add a ninth plus a minor seventh here. C minor. Add the 11th note, 
and then D, instead of playing a D, which is the fifth, we'll play a D minor seventh. And back to G minor. There are all these things you can add to a chord. Uh, just not so much pad out, but just to make it sound like it's more interesting. Another div uh, device I sometimes used is if I'm playing a diminished chord, sometimes instead of the chord, I'll play the scale. So say that I had this really simple run. C major 7th. Right, and diminished are usually a half a tone up. Not always, but quite often. So you get C. C sharp diminished. D minor 7th. G. So we had the C, which is the first one, C sharp diminished, the fourth, uh, minor second, sorry, this time D minor seventh, and then the fifth, the G. So I could go C, to D minor seventh, I'll do that again, C, instead of doing this, to the diminished. Do C, diminished scale, then D minor, all sorts of things like that you can add on. Uh, say for example, uh, that G that I played there, the dominant seventh, the fifth, and the one, four, five in the key of C. Let's have a look at that. So sometimes you can, you've got to try these with different tunes, guys. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. So say for example, you could add a sharp five. That's all I'm doing is uh, the fifth note of the scale is D, I'm just sharpening it. And that's the pattern, just very simple. I'd say, for example, a basic seventh pattern, which is holding the bass and trebles, add the D sharp. But the cool thing is that pattern moves all over the guitar, so if I wanted to play A sharp five, B flat sharp five, these are all the things to add. And uh, same thing, you can add the ninth which in the key of G would be A. Take it down one flat ninth. Back to major seventh. All things like that, just adding a wee bit more on. But one of the things I definitely would encourage you to do is just play a chord, any chord, and find out the notes that feel cool with that chord. They don't sound like a discord. That's, that's cool. Uh, D minor seventh. I'm going to drop down to D minor 7, but I'll play that D minor 9th with the minor 7 added. Then G7. I had an invented 5th. Instead of playing the G, I'm playing the G sharp, which is usually... Oh God, these strings are way past their best. It's usually quite used quite a lot in an introduction, adding a uh, sharp 5th. An augmented 5th, I should say. Anyhow, that's some wee things to add to your chords. Uh, nines, flat nines, minor sevens, minor nines. Just work on them and add them into certain tunes that you would play. And uh, you'll notice quite a difference. Do it slowly, then you can build the speed up. And again, my right hand, I've had people asking about it. And basically, guys, that's all I do. I stick to the straight rule. As my thumb plays the bass, and my fingers just play the trebles. And again, the best way to do it is just like that, just play, uh, say for example, A minor 9th, we've done this before, just playing, thumb playing the bass, finger playing the trebles, take it down one, another one, okay. and then you can move on to an apprego. Do it in fact, I'll use these two. And that's all, it's just thumb. And I say a good way to learn it's in a boss or other. And if I'm playing a melody, and rather than just going, oh, sorry. We 
only using my fingers, I can pick the melody line out and I can add on the parts of the chords that I want to. Sometimes I just want a bass and two notes. A preggio. So there they diminish the scale. Anyway, that's about the gist of it. So just experiment the chords, the nines, the flat nines, the minor chords, and keep working on your right hand. And uh, the usual caveat we want on the right hand, I know it's very, very difficult, it's really not easy, but try and keep your right hand unsupported so it's floating up and down, which means you can get all these better tones. Anyway, I hope that helps some, and I hope it's a wee bit of interest for you, and uh, I'll catch you again for the next lesson. Bye now.